Morning chaps, down here nice and early today on a Tuesday and what I would like to do is complete the top of this HLT so we're just going to cut off a 20mm standoff whack it in the ring roller if needs be I might be able to hand form it and then we're going to tack it onto the top of the tank and see what it looks like so let's fire up the plasma Hey, I'm dead impressed with this. It's looking really good now. I've got this. Oh, quick tripod over. Now I've got this uh, lip on for the cladding. Take a look at this. I'm really, really excited. So you can see where I've built out. We're coming off the tank and then we're going to flick down a little bit there. These sections for the inlets have all been made separate. I might do something similar down there around them as well. So all I have to do now, I've tacked it all on. He's just run round and uh, flow the corners and that will be the whole top of the tank completely finished ready for insulation and cladding. It looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. Right, we've moved the mash tun in. This time I'm going to do exactly the same again but there's no ports to cut out around or anything like that. So it's a straight run. I've got the other one finished. Do you want to have a look? There she is. Lovely top onto her. As you can see, she looks quite neat. And then around this side, there's the uh, ports. It looks alright, doesn't it? 
This is not exactly 90 degrees, but I told you I like rustic, man. I like rustic. I think she's ready for cladding. So we can pretty much, well, I do need a lid, actually. So we've got to figure out how I'm going to put a lid on there. So I think what I'm going to do is have the lid just fit onto this rim here, come to the outside of that, and then I'll put some clip down latches of some type, you know, push friction fit things, see what I can get hold of. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to use yet, but I think that's the route I'm going to take. A couple of interesting developments with this, uh, this rolled tank. I don't know if you can see that smoke rising there. I'm guessing that there must have been some type of either lubricant or sealant inside this lip before they actually rolled it and that's what's burning off now. While I'm welding around here I actually come up with a cracking idea. All of the ends of the welding rods, the electrodes that I've got, I saved them all. They're too small to use because you burn your fingers. But on this occasion, there's a gap just there and they rest in nicely. So because I'm getting short on the 2.4 millimeter rods and that's what I really want to be using for this, I can just drop all of the stubby bits in and whiz around like that. Well, I've had quite a productive day, folks, actually. Stuart's going to kill me again. Because I'm not allowed to take any of the cans of beer anymore. <laughs> well, I am, but uh, it's not a wise thing to do because uh, some of these beers are expensive. I'll try them first if we've never had it before. But I'm not drinking the stock. Having said that, though, I really fancied a beer. So I've got a cider, actually, because there's no beer down here that I, I can have. And this is the Orchard Farms Vintage at 7.2. Yeah, it's a good job I'm nearly finished. So I've got the uh, top on this tank as well. Oh, that's good. And uh, all tacked on. You can see the tack work here basically just about meeting up the outside edges. I've got the welder set to 160 amps and it's just a, poof, a quick blast on the switch and it just lights up these tacks. Now if you can see the difference, might be able to zoom you in a bit, a bit more. So one or two of these tacks for instance, have got little crater cracks in and they're discoloured. That's when I've been moving fast. If you keep the torch on and leave the post flow on the gas, then you get nice silvery looking tacks with no discoloration whatsoever and no crater crack. But that's really down to me just being an eager beaver and wanting to crack on. So I've probably got myself half an hour now, but before Gemma comes to pick me up, she does quiz night, you see, at the pub, which is a Tuesday night. So, she'll be here, I said half past six would be the best time for me. It's half past five, I've got an hour. I bet you I can do the outside of this in an hour. I had a bit of problem flowing on the inside of this particular rim because it's concave as the roll top disappears in there. And every now and then, it just blew out. I could have a run of 18, 20 inches, but every now and then it just blew out on me. Other than that, we've got a real nice looking bead in there that's not gonna interfere with the lid. So for things like this, I'm just gonna have to grind it off. But this stuff here on the outside, that's not gonna need any work doing to it. On the fermenter, I pulled it off flush so that water and what have you can run off because I don't want anything backing into the fermenter even though it's got a hurdle to climb over but if I get some nice neat welds on this I'll probably not grind these welds off and just leave them as they are
So Jemski must be running a little bit late. It's quarter to seven now and she's not here yet. But listen to the resonance. Somebody asked me for that. Record it. Anyway, seriously, somebody asked me for that recording of that tank ringing, or a tank ringing. Anyway, I digress, I digress. Because Gemma's running a little bit late, I can only imagine she's feeding the children. It's actually allowed me to get the top of this tank finished. You know, I really am covered in shit <laughs> and itchy. But no, on a real serious note, I really am pleased how this has turned out. The fact that we've just got this 50mm standoff and a 25mm, so it's 2 inch and 1 inch, that's hot still, uh, to allow us to put timber behind there, 50mm of insulation and then some real thin timber. And the timber is only going to be like this matchboarding kind of stuff, which you can see end on is really, really thin. Yeah, it's probably it's probably 10 mil at a push, but more likely six or seven. In fact, this is tongue and groove, so it's slightly thicker than the stuff I'm going to be using. Then this will push up against there, just like that. And it will also cover the tops of the legs. Somebody also asked how am I going to cap these off? Well, I'm not. These are going to act as uh, load bearers, so we put strap in, we'll put a block on top of here and we'll put strap in from each leg all the way around and that gives us something to pin the timber to. Froggy knows what I'm talking about, he helped me do it last time. So once that timber's on there, you can see, you will not see the legs. Well, you will see the legs, you won't see the top of the leg. And then we'll have another one of these bands around the bottom and maybe one around the middle. But these bands on the top and bottom, uh, the middle and the bottom, they'll be adjustable. So we'll be able to tighten these up and put some compression on there. And then that will prevent all of it falling off. I think once that's covered, painted or varnished, do we have a colour or do we varnish? I don't know. Leave your suggestions in the comments box. Gemma's here now. Look at that. Perfect timing. You're a wee bit late, my dear. I know, I'm Alright, I'm. Right, I'll get my stuff and I'm en route. Right, we're in the car. The kids seem quite. You said they've eaten? They've eaten? Yeah. Dom's had a shower? A shower? What? Happy birthday, Dom. Yeah, over his head. Right, I will be signing off, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. I need a shower. You're not coming Bye. with me for that. Bye! <laughs>